Again, thank you for joining us on today's presentation, Exploring Adobe Acrobat Sign Advanced E-Signature Capabilities. Our presenters today are Mike Priesman in Product Marketing, and we are joined with by Serge St. Felix. He will be conducting our demonstration for today. With that, I'm so pleased to turn the floor over to Mike. Go ahead, Mike, you have the floor. Great. Thank you so much, Phil. And thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, once again, I'm really happy to talk about Adobe Acrobat Sign. Today's topic is advanced e-signature capabilities. So we're going to have a great demo in terms of what can you do with Acrobat Sign. I'll give a bit of an overview. Uh, this is kind of the roadmap. If you've joined us for the first time, so covering advanced features, we have a lot of on-demand webinar topics that we've recorded that are available through our website. So definitely check those out to look at any of those topics. And a brief roadmap in terms of what's coming next month, we're going to be covering some of the, the key initiatives in digital transformation for education. I will actually be covering some of those a little bit today, but we'll have more of a deep dive in terms of how broadly can you go with digital transformation in education next month. And then wrapping up the year, covering a more advanced topic around document automation. So definitely an interesting one as well. But without further ado, before we get started for today's topic, we wanted to do a quick poll just to kind of learn a little bit more about you, all of our participants. What is your role? Where are you coming from? What are you here to uh, learn from today's session? So we'll pause for a brief moment here while we give everyone a chance. I can see the responses coming in live and looks like we have a pretty varied audience today uh, as we usually see a lot of people from the IT organization within an institution. So that's great. You guys are, are boots on the ground in terms of rolling out technology like Acrobat Sign. So glad that everyone here is interested in learning about the technology and the functionality. Quite a few folks from finance and HR. So that's also great. There's a ton of use cases for e-signatures, their leadership procurement. So a pretty good mix of different functional um, functional users from within an educational institution. So that's great to see. I'll give another couple seconds for more people to submit this information. Obviously helpful for us to know who is learning about our technology and what are you looking to learn about? Okay, so let's get started with the kind of first topic of today. So before jumping into Acrobat Sign, the product itself, just wanted to speak a little bit about Adobe's mission in education. Obviously, Adobe is a technology company focused on creativity and document capabilities, but we are a strong partner for the education industry, and we have a really powerful mission that we want to help support all of our education customers with. So to start that, really wanted to kind of mention that when you're thinking of technology, how do you want to invest? What kind of transformations do you want to have? It's really because there's never been a more critical time to transform education with things like the pandemic coming in and changing the way that instructors in, instructors teach their classes, the way that students interact with course material. There's so many changes that have happened and it's just really a great time to come in and change the way things are working to make a ton of great, meaningful improvements. When we think of what are some of the top challenges that educational institutions, whether it's a K through 12 uh, school or district or higher education institution, everybody's really looking at the same core challenges. Obviously, there's a ton of things that are challenging, budget restrictions, things like that. But at the top, no matter who you talk to, we're always concerned with how can we improve student grades? How can we get students more engaged with course material? How can we ensure that students are prepared for careers? And then the bottom line of how can I ensure that my school, district, college, university is successful through operational efficiency? And that's where we kind of focus on digital transformation. So with those key challenges, really our mission for education and partnering with you and your organizations is increasing student engagement, which is kind of student academic success, enabling career readiness of students, ensuring ubiquitous access and equity for all students, making sure all students have the capabilities, the technology and the tools for them to succeed. So really closing that digital divide and then driving institutional success, which is really the focus of today's session of 
how can you drive institutional success through digital transformation in, in your organization? So as I mentioned, that's what we're going to be covering today and then going into the details of how can you actually use Acrobat Sign and what are its advanced features that are going to make your digital transformation more successful. So when we talk about digital transformation, we like to really look at the starting point of that as going paperless. There's a lot of different priorities you can be looking at in terms of digital transformation, the classroom technology, so online and remote learning supports, all the different data systems, all of that complex things like SIS implementation improvements, LMS implementations, just your overall data and analytic systems. But really the easiest starting point, if you're really just starting on the digital transformation journey, or you're looking at how can I make a big improvement with, I don't want to say the least amount of effort, but I think when you're looking at going paperless versus these huge data system transformations, probably going digital is a low effort activity that's going to make a huge impact when you're converting paper forms to digital, automate, automating a lot of manual processes, moving your wet signatures to e-signatures. So there's a ton of things that can be done there and makes a ton of impact. And why is going paperless so important? I mean, there's really three main pillars that we look at that's why is paperless really important. Uh, first, just there's a lot of new operating models that students, faculty, staff, admins have to juggle between and going paperless is a huge enabler of that. So hybrid workforces, giving remote learning access, contact experiences, a lot of things that the pandemic obviously forced everyone to change. And now that we're in this world, it's how do we continue making this a great experience and making sure everything runs smoothly. And that kind of takes me to the middle one here where people just have much higher expectations in terms of what kind of digital experience am I going to get? If I'm a new student, a new college student, or a parent with my student in a K through 12 school, in the commercial world, the consumer world, there's been such huge investment in the experience. And it just, it's such a disconnect when you get a huge stack of paper to fill out. I mean, we've seen this when we go to the doctor's office still, paper, it just feels so old fashioned. So we're really looking at how do we up level that experience by giving anytime, anywhere access and really giving this consumer grade digital experience, which is where going paperless and adding e-signatures is a huge advantage. And then the world is just getting busier and busier in terms of data and documents. There's more things to track, more things to manage, more things to keep secure. There's a, really a form for nearly everything. So by going paperless, it's just one more way to make make your lives easier when you're dealing with so much more to, to process and file and store and manage and secure. So to kind of look at the before and after of what does a paper-based workflow look like to a paperless workflow world, there's really four major sticking points of why is paper so bad in terms of the educational experience. It's manual and time-consuming, complex and error-prone. When it's error-prone and complex, that just means there's a lot more security and compliance risks. And then as I mentioned on the previous slide, it's just a poor experience overall for anybody involved having to fill out a paper form nowadays when everything shouldn't be digital. So whether you're faculty, staff, students, parents, or guardians, it's just a, a really bad experience that leads to some of those, those downsides. And when we've looked at the education space, 80% of document-based workflows still involve physical paper forms. So just a huge area of opportunity. And then when you look at how does the world improve when you go to paperless workflows? So everything is automated and integrated. So a huge time savings. It's simple to manage and track. It's going to be secure and compliant because you can lock down the way that people fill out the forms and process that information. And then on the experience side, it's obviously quicker. It's easier, more accessible. So really benefits all around. So I think a lot of these benefits are clear. There's, there's a good reason why we have quite a few attendees today, everyone interested in learning about how can we go paperless and what kind of advanced features can we take advantage of so I don't need to sell this too strongly. I think everybody's on board with why should we go paperless? Why should we, why should we incorporate electronic signatures into my organization? But kind of putting those benefits into a more measurable state. So we've done also some research on this, partnering with uh, Forrester Consulting and there's a really measurable impact. So if you're also looking for 
<clears throat> justification to make an investment in your organization of why should we invest in Adobe tools for going paperless. So you can see that there's quite significant impacts in terms of transaction speed. So when we say transaction speed, that's how long does it take for me to get a paper or document signed, filled out and executed. So you can see at least a 30% increase in the speed of the time it takes to get these things finalized. 25% improvement in compliance, just because of all that's reduction in errors. In fact, another thing that we've measured, 85% reduction in errors when you're using paperless workflows. And then there's the time savings in terms of labor hours for those admins that need to work on getting the paper documents printed and sent and faxed and shipped and imported and all those kind of busy things. And the dollar amount of just how much does it cost to print something, the paper, the shipping, $6 per document you're actually able to save by going paperless. So a lot of great justification if, again, you're looking for more proof points to kind of bring to leadership of why should we invest in this? Because obviously it's going to make your jobs a lot easier and more streamlined and it's going to save the organization time and money and compliance. So a lot of great reasons to go paperless. And then really one of the best things about going paperless in your educational institution is it's really relevant everywhere across the across the institution. So whether it's on the back office side, so for use cases around operations management or staff management, so HR, procurement, vendor agreements, lease agreements, so many things on the back office side, but then also on the student facing side, there are so many forms that can be improved by going paperless with an e-signature. So whether it's K through 12, where things like um, release and permission slips, IEP forms that are such a super complex uh, process that you need so many people to fill out and sign and going paperless with that just makes that process a lot more streamlined on the higher education side. So things like having students sign off to get their transcripts or financial aid forms, donation forms, grants. I mean. The list doesn't really stop, but just as an example, there's really a relevant use case for every different department or organization within your institution. So when looking to get started with electronic signatures, really the best thing is to choose one or two use cases that are gonna be the easiest to get off the ground, show that you're able to show really great impact with it, and then start to branch out into different areas. So, talked a lot about the benefits of why going paperless, why e-signatures, what are the benefits? So what is Adobe actually offering in this space? It is Adobe Acrobat Sign, and it's really the only e-signature solution built to transform these end-to-end -end document journeys. So Adobe Acrobat Sign is our enterprise class standalone e-signature solution. And it's been really, it's been adopted by so many educational institutions. We have so many great success stories with it. And when thinking of what are the really the top three reasons of why Acrobat Sign is such a great solution is that it's really easy to use. We have really deep integrations with the applications you're probably already using within your institution. And we have a lot of intelligence built in to Acrobat Sign. So it's just kind of a quick jumping off point into those three areas before we go into an actual demo, which is probably why most of you are here today thinking of easy to use. So I think this is probably the most important thing that if the application isn't easy to use, then it's gonna be really hard to get your end users, whether they're in HR, whether student facing, whoever they are, from actually using it and configuring it and building workflows within Acrobat Sign. So when we think of what are the core features within Acrobat Sign when you're getting documents electronically signed and managed, so really five key ways to look at it that first, it's really easy to prepare documents for signature. And you'll see this when Surge starts his demo, but really you can load up any type of document, whether it's a PDF, a Word document, or really anything, and we make it really easy to configure that document for e-signature. In terms of how do you get documents signed, you can either request it directly from one-to-one, -one, so you can almost think of it as sending an email where you're adding your document, sending it out to who you need to, and then you get it back. You can send it out to many people at once. So if you have the same document that needs to be signed by multiple people, we call this feature bulk send, where you can think of it as almost a mail merge where you can upload all the different email addresses and send the document out to all these people and then track its progress. 
Uh, tracking documents and setting reminders is another key reason why it's so easy to use and why it's so effective because you can get status updates in real time, get notified when people sign the documents, add reminders on a daily basis, weekly basis, however you see fit, and then get all of those details after the fact with our audit trail that really gives you all of the insights into who signed it and when and where and what kind of authentication did you use, what kind of signer identity requirements do you add to the workflow. So a lot of things you can do. You can also post documents to a website to have people come and fill it out and sign it so you don't always need to know ahead of time who is signing the document. So another really powerful way. And then it works with your favorite applications and devices. So you don't always need to be using Acrobat Sign's actual web app. You can actually integrate the technology into other apps you're using, whether it's an HR app, for example, Workday to kind of get employee contracts signed, whether it's SharePoint where you're storing files and you want to send those files out for signature directly from SharePoint, Outlook, even Power Automate. We have a ton of automations. So really the key thing is make it easy to use wherever you want to get your work done, whether it's in an application that we're integrated with, whether it's using our API to custom build an integration, using our mobile app for Acrobat Sign, or just using the, the regular web app itself. So making it easy to fit every scenario that you have. That integration partner ecosystem is super broad. We also offer APIs, so you can integrate this into any type of system. But really when you think of any sort of use case, whether it's collaboration, more of a CRM type of application or using HR. There are so many integrations that we have out of the box with all these different partner applications that you can really benefit from e-signature capabilities no matter what kind of workflow you're doing. And then I think one of the key advantages of Acrobat Sign is we have AI and machine learning built into it that really make this process much more streamlined for you when it comes to adding documents and figuring out where are the fields that need to be filled out by the recipient. So our AI platform, Adobe Sensei, can recognize where are the fields. So it really makes it easy to just kind of drag a document into Acrobat Sign and it builds out all the forms for you. And we're also adding a lot more value with additional AI and machine learning capabilities to really eliminate repetitive tasks like extracting information, giving reminders of when does a contract need to be sent out again for renewal? So we're adding a lot more, a lot more intelligence into the platform as well to just kind of make this entire thing much more streamlined. So three, three kind of big buckets of why is Acrobat Sign so easy to use for education? It's just easy to accomplish the different workflows you need. It's integrated with the systems you're hopefully already using. And then we've added AI and machine learning into it to really improve that experience overall. Uh, with that, I talked a lot. Hopefully that was some interesting information for you to kind of build up on why do you want to incorporate this into your institution. But I think the main topic for today is really a demo of what are some of these advanced capabilities. So I'm going to hand it off to my colleague Serge here, and we're going to take you through a couple examples of how can you actually use Acrobat Sign. So Serge, I'll hand it off to you. Thank you, Mike. Uh, and, and thank you all for joining. I'm really excited to uh, go over a couple of use cases, a couple of demos uh, today uh, for Acrobat Sign. And so first I wanna start off with just a quick story. Uh, this is me and this is my daughter, Sierra. Uh, she plays the flute in marching band. And one thing that I've noticed this year is she is extremely busy. Uh, she is extremely busy with band. She's extremely busy with homework. She has a lot going on. And the reason why I'm sharing this is because she has a lot of favorite subjects at school. One of her favorite subjects is math. And I received an email uh, from her high school about her, per, her being able to be a TA uh, in a math class. And I'm actually gonna take this form today uh, and show you how you can digitize. Now, the reason why I wanna share this with you is because I wanna show you two things. One, the power of web forms, but two, I wanna illustrate how this is going to, as Mike was talking about, how we can digitize you know, your, your school. So today, uh, this high school, in order to be a TA, you get this email uh, and you have to download this document. You then have to print it. Once you download it, you print it out. 
you sign it with your wet signature, you circle the periods where you want to be a TA or the semester, then the student has to walk over to the teacher, give that teacher uh, this document. He or she then has to write their name and sign it. And then either the teacher or the student has to walk back to the counseling office to give it to one of the counselors. And that's when they approve it. And as they look over this document, uh, once they approve it, then they file it in their filing cabinet. That's a lot of marching, unnecessary marching for my daughter to do. And so what I would like to show you is how you can take this actual form and digitize the process. And so now I'm in Acrobat Sign and I'm in the template section because what I want to show you is how I took this, this document and I digitized it first. I converted it from, from paper to a digital document. And so I'll go ahead and open this up. And the reason why I want to show this to you is I want to show you the field that I've added. Uh, so these are just some text fields uh, that I've added to this document that will allow, you know, the student and the teacher to quickly sign uh, and have it routed to the appropriate parties. And so here in Acrobat Sign, I've added all of my necessary fields. On the right hand side, what you'll see is just a menu of fields that you can use. So for example, if I need uh, a third field, let's say I want a field for the approver to actually sign, I can come in and I can drag and drop just another field and I can add an additional participant. And so over here is where I can come in and add more participants. And then I can assign this signature field to a third participant. Uh, and then once this goes out into my web form, which I'm going to build today, uh, you can see how the student, the teacher, and then the actual approver can come in and, and sign this document without having to walk back and forth with all that time. Uh, now, one thing about approvers and signers, approvers don't actually have to sign the document. So I'm just gonna remove this and we're just gonna have the two participants that have areas where they can enter in their name uh, and sign. And so this is the actual uh, agreement that I'm going to be using. I'm going to save this and then I'm going to come to my main screen on Acrobat Sign. So anyone that has Acrobat Sign, this is what you're going to see. You have your home screen where you can do a lot of different things. Uh, up on the left hand side, you have your send tab. So this is where you would actually send ad hoc agreements. If you have an agreement you want to send someone, just come to the send tab, enter in your the email for the recipient and then send the agreement. The Manage tab is where I was just at, where it has all of my templates. And then I have a Reporting tab and an Account tab that tells me, gives me an idea of how many agreements have, sent, have been sent out. And the Account tab will help me set up how I want Sign to be used across my organization. But I'm going to come back to my home screen and what I'm going to build first is our web form. And so if you look down below, I have some other actions. And over here where it says Publish Web Form, that's what I'm going to jump into. So I'll go ahead and click on publish web form. And again, I already have my uh, actual document, the template that I was just using, that's already been set up. And so all I need to do here is give my web form a name. So I'm gonna call this TA for math. And then right here where it says participant role, this is where someone like my daughter would be the actual participant. She can go onto her Chromebook, and go to the website where this web form will be located and she can start signing or filling out this web form right then and there as opposed to having to download, print, sign, walk over to the teacher, have her sign and so forth. And so we're going to set this participant role as a signer and over here where it says authentication, by default, email is the default uh, authentication. So if you have access to the actual email, you get the actual agreement. And I'll show you how that works. Now, one really nice thing about WebForm, and I was looking in the chat pod uh, during, the, during this webinar, and Kyle, you had asked if you could add participants uh, in a web form. You absolutely can, and that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna click on Add Participant, and here I have a participant, and I can actually assign different roles. In this case, after my daughter signs, it's going to go to the teacher and I need the teacher to sign. So I'm going to keep it as this second participant as a signer. 
and the authentication method will be email. And this is where I'm going to have my daughter specify the teacher's email address. Uh, I can make that field required or not required. I'm just going to uncheck it just in case if she didn't need a teacher to sign it, she can proceed with the actual web form. And then I'm going to add some instructions. And so what these instructions are, this is for uh, the first signer, so for my daughter, on what she needs to do in order to send this form or this agreement to the next participant. So I'll say note for teachers, please review and sign. So this is just a note that they will see, as these are the instructions that will be given. Now, at the end, there is a counseling department, and this is optional, but I think it's a good thing to add. So I'm going to add in an email address for the actual approver, and I'm gonna mark them as an approver. And so what you're gonna see is that this individual doesn't have to sign, but they will actually get the agreement and they can click approve. So that's the first part of creating an actual web form. You give it a name. By default, since it's a web form, whoever has access to that web form, whether it's on the internal site of the school or externally facing a, a link for anyone to go to, they would be the first participant. And then they have the option of adding another participant by adding their first and last name and their email address. So it gets routed to that second participant. Once the two participants have signed, then it'll go, it'll be routed to the countersigner. And in this case, they're just going to approve. Now I need to add my file. So I'll come over here to add files. I'll come over to my templates and here's my TA form. And I'm just going to attach this. I'll go ahead and click on preview and add signature fields just so that we're for sure that the actual agreement that I'm using uh, is set up properly. But before I do that, I just want to draw your attention to a few other options as well. Here I can password protect uh, the actual uh, agreement if I want. In this demo, I'm not going to do that, but that is an option uh, available to you. And another option that I didn't show is the other authentication methods. So I could password protect, you know, the the email. And so if I want the countersigner to, you know, enter in a password before they get the agreement, I have that option as well. Uh, this where it says KBA, that re refers to knowledge based authentication. And that's just an additional feature where if you don't want to manage the passwords, you can then basically have public uh, public information about the individual that the participant would have to answer these challenge questions regarding um, who they are in terms of their identity. And then they would be able to uh, enter into the agreement. Just for simplicity's sakes, we're just gonna keep everything at email. I have my form, I'll go ahead and click next. And what this is going to do, this is going to take you back to the screen similar to where I was at the actual um, template. And this is going to show me here are your actual fields. You have a date field, which is basically a signer info field. What this means is when the first participant gets this agreement, it's going to show the date. And this is a place where the, the student can enter in her name, sign, and then it'll then get routed to the next uh, individual. Over here, this is just miscellaneous stuff. These are different periods and semesters that the student will have to fill out uh, to determine what period and what semester he or she will be a TA for. Uh, and I'm making these a required field. So you have the option by making fields required. If you want, you can make them read only. And we have a lot of different types of fields available to you. So what I would, what I would invite everyone to do is think of some really simple uh, use cases, as Mike has mentioned, and start there. This is a very simple one, uh, a TA form that can be easily implemented. And so now everything looks good. I'm going to click save. This is going to take me to a new screen. And I'm actually going to put this screen, uh, I'm actually going to put this link uh, out in the chat later so you guys can interact with it. But today I'm actually going to play the role as my daughter. So here's the actual URL. Or if you want to put this as a code snippet, we give you a code snippet as an iframe. Down below, this is what the actual form would look like. So let's go ahead and post that on, 
on the site. So let's go ahead and add this. So here's the actual web form. And so if I were on my Chromebook like my daughter and I wanted to be a TA for a math class, all I have to do is just click on start. And then here's the actual date. I can go ahead and put in my, my name and I can come in and I can sign. And we'll go ahead and just, I can type my name. If I wanna draw it, I'm not really good at drawing on a trackpad, but you would get the point. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just use my name. I'll click apply. I'm gonna select the periods that I need. And then down below, I have the click to sign button. So now here's where I can come in and say, all right, well, I want a TA for my math teacher. And so my math teacher is Cindy, last name is B, and I will go ahead and enter in her email address. And now that I've entered in her email address, I'll click on next. And if I want, I can add a message. I could say, I would love to TA your math class. That's what, the, that's what the teacher will see. I'll click on next. And before you actually sign the, the agreement, it's going to ask you to confirm if you were really, if you really intended to send this agreement out. And so let me go ahead and put in an email that I have quick access to. I'll go ahead and hit, click to sign. And now the document is off. So that's how easy it was to take a form, digitize it, and set up as a, as a web form. So here I have just one more step, and this step is basically confirming that I chose to actually sign this agreement. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna come over to my iPad. And so here's my iPad. Here's the actual agreement that I just sent out, and it's asking me to confirm my email address. Now I've already done this before, and so what you'll see is my, it'll say that you've already confirmed this email. So this signature has already been verified, uh, but if it was the very first time that you were verifying this, it would be a green banner saying, hey, you've just verified this uh, agreement. And so now I'm gonna come back to my inbox. Here is the actual agreement that the teacher would get. Here's the private message. I would love to TA your math class. All I have to do is just click on review and sign. And now as the teacher, again, no walking, no downloading, none of that. It just comes right to your inbox. So here I'm on my mobile device. If I'm on the go, I can get this agreement. Uh, and so I can come here, I can click on start. And here I can see that Sierra has uh, entered her name, she has signed. So now it's my turn as the teacher to enter my name. So I'll go ahead and put in Cindy. And then I'll go ahead and sign. And so I'll put in my signature, I'll click finish, and I'll tap to sign. Last part. Now we wanna see what it looks like for an approver. And so we'll come back to my same inbox because this is coming to this uh, same inbox. The approver doesn't have to actually sign. They just get the agreement and they're given a different instructions. Here they just have to review and approve so I can click on review and approve. It's gonna come into my inbox. I'll click continue and I'll see that I have all the necessary signatures and everything looks good. I'll hit start and I'll just click approve. And then here I can enter in my name. We'll say I'm Jimmy, the counselor, and I will approve. And I'm good to know. So that's how easy it was to take um, a, an actual use case where there's a lot of downloading and walking uh, uh, involved and making that more seamless. The next thing I wanna share with you is how you can take a permission slip and, and send that to many individuals. And so this is probably a use case that you will find in your schools. There are field trips, there are clubs, uh, and I would invite you to be that champion, you know, uh, to your to your educators and help them find a use case where you can digitize that process. I want to come into this uh, poetry uh, club permission slip, show you what this looks like, and I'm going to send this to uh, a bunch of, of parents or guardians. And so this is the poetry club, 
And basically what we want to do is we want to be able to send this out in bulk. Now, there was uh, a question uh, in the chat, I think it was by Vicky asking whether or not if you can add additional fields to uh, a document and have that be sent out in bulk. And the answer is yes, and you're gonna see that. So right here where I have this field called uh, student name, I'm gonna double click on this. And this is the actual name of the field. The reason why I have this is because I want to be able to have the name of the student automatically populate in this field. And I can do a couple things. I can make it read only, which would ensure that you can't modify this field, or I can uncheck it and allow the whoever receives this agreement to make a correction if I may have gotten that student's name spelled incorrectly. And so here I'm going to have the student name, an email field, and then a full name and the signature for the parent or guardian. So this is, a, this is the actual document we're gonna use in our bulk send. So I'll save that and we're gonna come over to our home screen. And again, down below, this is where I'm going to send in bulk. So I'll go ahead and click on send in bulk. And these are the things that you have uh, in terms of options. If I want, I can actually copy a list of email addresses and just paste them in here. In fact, let's just quickly do that. So here are some email addresses that I can just come in. I'll just copy those and I'll come back and I'll just paste them in there. It automatically goes in. So that's one way of doing it. But let's say you have a lot of email addresses and you don't want to go that route. Well, Acrobat Sign provides you a CSV file that's basically a template that allows you to bulk upload via this template. And that's what I was just showing you right here. This is what this template is. So as you can see, it has a few different headings. This first column is the actual email address or the email addresses. The second column is the full name of, of the parents. And this is information that uh, the educator would most likely have uh, when they're sending out you know, mass emails to parents uh, on behalf uh, of, their, of their child. This last column, this is a custom column. This is the name of the student. And so if you recall, when I was in that template, I had a field labeled student name. What's gonna happen is all these names will get entered in to that field that coincide to the actual recipient. So let's see this in action. I'll go ahead and click on upload. Here's my permission slip. It's now currently uploading. Now, the second thing I need to do is I need to actually add the, the, the agreement. And so I have this in my document library. It's a good practice that anytime you are sending any agreement out with Acrobat Sign that you start off by creating a reusable template. I'm just gonna quickly switch screens here and come to my home screen. And right over here where it says create a reusable template, this should always be one of your starting points. Build the reusable template and have it in your library. That way you have access to it anytime you need to send out an agreement. And you can set that to be accessible for people within a specific group or your entire organization. All right, let me come back here and I'm gonna grab this actual template. So I'll click on document library and then we're gonna go in and look for the poetry permission slip. I'll go ahead and attach that. And what you'll notice is the file name of this template is inherited into the agreement name. And then down below, this is uh, text that you would see in the actual email itself. So here I can put in, please review agreement and sign, whatever you'd like. I can password protect this uh, uh, the document if I need to, uh, but I'm not going to do that. So now the last thing I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and click on, again, preview, position, signatures, and add form fields. Just to double check and confirm that I have all my form fields ready to go within this document. So while that's being processed, um, 
here it's it's really quick here's what the screen would look like you can come in and review again i have the student name so it's going to get automatically populated from that csv file and the only thing they'll need to do is add their email address which if i want to populate that as well i could i'll go ahead and click on send and now that agreement has been sent to the following emails so we'll come back here different email uh, inboxes. We'll go to this last one, which I can show you on the screen. So let me come over to my iPad here. And then let's give that a second for it to come in. Let me make sure I have that. Give it a few seconds. And while that's coming up, I will go ahead and open up my other inbox uh, and show you where that's coming through. So let me give me, let me quickly stop sharing here and I'll jump into my other inbox and I'll reshare and show you the actual uh, agreement itself. So I will go ahead and open up my other Outlook email. And I will go ahead and reshare. All right. So let's go ahead and go into my desktop. So here's uh, the other inboxes that I have. And here's the actual permission slip. And so I can come in here. I'll copy this link. And I'll come back to my web browser. And I'll open this up in an incognito browser just to mimic that I'm a brand new user. This is a, the signing ceremony is going to look exactly the same uh, as what you saw earlier. So here's the actual agreement. All I need to do is hit continue. And then I'm going to click start. And there it is, Frank Jane. Uh, I have the in, I have the email. So then I can come in and put in an email address, and then I can click to sign. And that's all there is to it. And so this is what it would take to basically send agreements in bulk. Uh, it's a really simple process. Simply just identify who your users are. I would highly recommend using the CSV file that I shared with you earlier to bulk upload all those uh, emails into our bulk send and send it off. So I want to just take this time to thank everyone for your participation. And I'll go ahead and turn the time back over to Mike for some parting thoughts. Mike, over to you. Yeah, great. Thanks, Serge. We had a lot of great questions come in here that we'll get to that momentarily. But before we move straight to our Q&A, just kind of wrap up today's session. Um, so one more quick poll that we want to do just to kind of get some ideas from everyone in today's audience. What would you like us to uh, cover in a future webinar? So, I mean, we have a couple already planned sessions, but always great to just kind of get some open, open discussion from those that are joining us today in terms of what you want to see next. We'll give this a bit of time here. seeing some questions around um, how how can we create templates? How can we work with templates? So it looks like templates is a big area of interest. Uh, dig digital signatures, working with Microsoft Teams, that's definitely a, a very popular integration we have that we would love to cover that on another session that we have. So a lot of good answers here. So give that another minute. And then once we turn off the poll here, also feel free to use the Q&A pod if you want to drop in any other topics that so you didn't get a chance to add to the poll here. And in terms of next steps, so as I mentioned at the beginning, we have all of our previously recorded sessions on demand for you to take a look at and kind of learn some additional 
insights around Acrobat Sign. For example, we have sessions around our different integrations, especially Microsoft integrations. We have a lot of a lot of resources around that. And then in terms of just more of these advanced capabilities, some of them that that Surge presented today, we have a ton of information on our website as well to kind of learn of how do you use those and what other features are available. So definitely check out some of the, the links that we're mentioning here. And join us next month where we're gonna go a little bit deeper in terms of what does digital transformation look for education. So here we talked about the, the signing component of it, but there's so much when you think of, of digital transformation just in terms of how do you digitize a paper form into a digital form? How do you automate workflows much more broadly than just getting something signed? So definitely join us next month as we cover that. And then if you're interested in a custom demo for you and your organization, drop us your email address in the Q&A pod here and we'll have our team reach out to you for that. But without further ado, let's kind of move into our last segment here, our kind of Q&A section. So uh, my colleague, Corey, I'm going to pass it to her. She's going to kind of go through the really long list of questions that came in today. And then Serge and I will uh, do our best to to answer it. So Corey, I'll pass it off to you and then let's let's see what we got. Thank you so much. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Um, yep. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so good afternoon, everybody. Good morning, depending on what time zone you're in. Uh, as Mike mentioned, my name is Corey Wood. I am one of the K-12 account managers. And there was, as Mike said, a lot of questions that came in, a lot of great questions. Hopefully we can get to some good ones. I don't think we'll make all of them in the amount of time here that we have left. Um, if we don't, again, to what Mike said, please put your information in the chat pod or some folks have my email address that's there. Please send us an email or we can connect with you to answer those specifically. Um, I'm going to start with a couple of them that just came through because I think um, what I saw across the board, there's lots of questions that pertains to specific versions of Sign because Adobe does have some different versions. Uh, obviously, a lot of questions around web forms based on the demonstration itself. Um, and then it seemed like a lot of ties into, um, I'll call it the reporting audit trail, sort of what happens next stage. Um, and so some of those further ones came in. Um, Edward, I think, was the last one that popped up with a question, but I think it's a great question, is what happens or, or what is the best way to retrieve a completed signed form? Um, and I think that that pertains to both the web form process and just sign in general um, when it comes to the reporting audit trail and, and what happens there. And I think um, there's some other questions that sort of pertain to that, but Serge, Mike, do you wanna touch on like once documents are completed, the available options there? Yeah, so uh, you so automatically it's always stored in our in our Acrobat servers. But what you can do is you can have a copy of those agreements stored in a cloud repository of your choice. Uh, and there's different ways of setting those up. Microsoft has a really seamless and simple integration where it's really they've actually set up for you. You just have to click a button to turn it on, and then you specify where you want that agreement to live in your SharePoint uh, repository or in a OneDrive. Uh, you can do that with Google as well. Um, and you can also do that with some other cloud repositories. So by default, st it's stored in Acrobat, but if you want to store it elsewhere, um, we give you your choice uh, which cloud repository you're using. Yeah, and I think there's another follow-up question to that as well, Serge, that I, I'm gonna kind of paraphrase some of the other questions. Um, being able to specify who it goes to. So obviously you have folks that are signing it in the, in the ceremony, um, but can you set the process up to go to other individuals that might need a copy, somebody else in finance as an example? Yeah, so there's two places. So in the actual agreement itself, so if you wanna do it by agreement, in the signing ceremony itself, there's a place where you can add someone on CC. But then let's say this is a security thing and your security department needs to know all agreements that need to be sent out. Then there's one place within the account settings where you can say all agreements need to be routed or a copy of all agreements that are signed need to go to a specific individual. So those are the two different places. So if it's a global thing, you want to go into your account settings. If it's per agreement, then there's a CC section in the signing ceremony uh, area itself where you can add those individuals. Okay, a couple options there, perfect. Um, and then there's a question that came in around attaching files to a form. And so 
I think, I don't know if you want to touch on that capability versus, you know, web forms versus like emailing a, a, a thing of a yeah. signature. Sorry. Yeah, so in the agreement itself, that's one of the fields that's available to you. That menu of fields that I showed when you're in, in the template section, uh, there's one field called uh, hyperlink uh, or, or our attachment. And so when you bring that field into the document, that gives you an option to attach a document uh, to that agreement. So as you're building your, your template or your agreement, if that agreement needs a spot for an attachment, you could bring in that field. Perfect. And so we do see that in the case as an example, like vaccinations, where parents need to mm -hmm. send back a copy of their vaccinations. Um, another question came in around bulk signatures. So this one, probably a pretty quick, simple one, but just wondering in the case of like the email participants on, let's say, the form for bulk signatures, you know, the visibility and who sees the emails that it's going to. So I, I think the answer is that it, it goes to each individual itself, so they're not seeing other people's email addresses. That is correct. Okay. Answer that one quickly. Um, okay, there's some longer questions here. I'm trying to paraphrase a few. Uh, let me go down here to this one because I think there was one. Um, there was one around, there was actually a few of them that came in specific to student signatures and being able to verify the identity of that student or that signer. Um, and I think I think there was a couple of ways that was actually phrased around if it's a web form versus something that goes out and being able to, maybe not even in, in the case of students, and, but any signer for that matter, being able to verify the identity of that person. So I know we do that through emails, but uh, there was a question about, I think in the web form process, them putting in their own emails is there a way to have them put in a specific email so that it's like school email versus personal email if that makes sense so with the web form if you are the if you're the first participant so in the case with my daughter she would be the first participant when she's adding in uh, someone else's email it's really up to her to add that person's email now we can add verification checks like anytime you are sending anytime you're signing an agreement uh, especially a web form. Before that web form goes out, it asks you to verify who you are. And so that would be our verification method um, available. But then outside of that, we have different types of verification methods when it comes to someone's identity. Before the actual agreement or before someone gets into the agreement, that's where we have our authentication methods. Email, password, knowledge-based authentication, uh, or, you know, if you have an account with Acrobat Sign, your own Acrobat Sign credentials. We can add another layer to that by password protecting the PDF or the agreement itself. And then lastly, there's a concept between e-signatures and digital or cloud signatures. Mm -hmm. So e-signatures is what I showed today, but then there is something called a cloud or a digital signature, and that's managed by a third party. And so there's a lot of different third party uh, solutions that manage a uh, person's identity, which, Ad which Adobe uh, supports. So if your recipients uh, prefer to use digital signatures during the signing process, um, then we can make sure that the signature field is configured for a digital signature as opposed to an e-signature. And I'm more than happy to, um, you know, go offline and, and, and speak to the individual about this in more detail if they'd like. Most definitely. Most yep. definitely. I, would, I would just add on to that one because I, I saw a lot of those questions like how do I lock down a web form to require people to only sign it using their, their student email address as an example. And with web forms, it's, it's a little bit tricky because you want to make that available for anyone to access and fill out because you don't know in advance who it is. So you can't require the email address. But another way to look at it is you would perhaps only publish the link to that web form behind a, a kind of a student login based um, web page that your institution has. So a student would have to first log in using their email, their student email address to access the page that kind of gives those links to the web form. So that's another kind of way of, of protecting it so only students have access to it. 
That's a great point. That, and I think that actually ties into, um, I know we're running out of time here, but there's a few questions I was going to get to specifically. Um, to that point, somebody was asking if they can restrict access to the web form to only people that have Adobe sign, so not the general public. Um, so I think you touched on that a little bit. I don't know if there's more color that you want to provide around that. Yeah, I, I would probably say, and I'll, I'll let Serge kind of give more of the, the, the technical kind of details behind it. But I think if if a form is 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 high value enough that you need to make sure that only specific email addresses are are signing it. I don't know if a web form is probably the best way. And then we have a lot of integrations with, for example, Microsoft Power Automate, where you can validate things like email addresses before moving on to the next flow in a workflow. But I think Serge, maybe I'll I'll pass that to you. Like, what do you see as some of the better ways to ensure that only specific email domains are accessing a document to sign it? Yeah, that would be controlled by the the end user. And so, what I would say is is, is spot on what you're you're you know alluding to. Uh, that would be behind their internal or their intranet site, right? Uh, and then you can integrate it with like one thing that comes to the top of my mind is you can take that URL and you can convert it into a uh, a SharePoint uh, link that is only accessible by people within the company's domain. And so uh, it becomes a kind of like a redirect, uh, but it's managed by, by the domain itself. Um, but to your point, if you have a, a form that does require a lot of, or if you have an agreement that requires, you know, a lot of different methods of authentication, web form would probably not be the best uh, or if you do go with the web form, you're going to want that behind a firewall and an internet site, not make it publicly facing. Certainly. So if I sort of summarize that quickly, it's there are multiple options. And I think depending on the use case and the type of form that you're trying to get signed, you know, a discussion with your account team might help you determine which is the right method for that. But there are options. Yep. Um, OK, and I know we're a minute to the top of the hour here. Um, couple of quick questions I think that came through. Is there a limit for bulk signatures on a form? Just came through real quick. Um, and I think the last one there is, is there a batch download option for completed web forms? So a way to download the responses. Yes, yes, you can. Uh, that's in the, uh, so for all agreements, you can uh, you can either do use our API or you can do it within the interface. Perfect, OK. So we are at the top of the hour. I know there was a ton of other fantastic questions that we didn't get to. Um, hopefully, we can respond to those. I did see some folks add their email addresses to the chat pod. Um, so we will try to respond to those as well as far as connecting with the account team. And I've added my email address. Uh, so if, if there are some additional questions, just feel free to uh, uh, send that to our team, and we'll get those answered. Fantastic. All right, well, I will hand it back over. And thank you so much, everybody, for, for joining. Great, thank you, Corey. And thanks to Mike and Serge as well. And thank you to our audience. That does conclude our presentation for today. We thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect and have a great remainder of your day.